waiting for the Tater Man to get going? Uh, no question about it. Uh, I think everybody's really waiting for Reggie to get going. I'm waiting for Reggie to get going. Uh, Billy Martin, the manager, has to be. Uh, here a guy comes in with all this so-called reputation and the big salary and everything else that goes along with the supposed Reggie Jackson. Well, Reggie, where the hell you been? <laughs> August of 1977. The drama and the tension surrounding Reggie Jackson and the Yankees is still blazing. The team is in third place, and it seems like their superstar is weighing them down more than stirring any drinks. They're running out of chances to salvage the season, which is why the Yankee captain decided to step up, put aside his differences with Reggie, and try to get Billy Martin to make a change. For whatever reason it was, I don't know what, but uh, Billy did not want to hit me clean up. Reggie was used to being the fourth guy. That's the power slot, and that's where he wanted to hit. Billy was hitting him fifth. And finally, Thurman suggested, you know, we should uh, talk to Mr. Steinbrenner. And we did. The Yankees were in Milwaukee, and Lou and Thurman went up to George's suite, and they were telling him, you've got to talk to Billy. You've got to get him to let this guy hit cleanup. And as they were talking, there was a knock on the door. Mr. Steinbrenner said, who's there? And he said, it's the skipper, Martin. George had the chalkboard up there and writing some names down, and the lineups had Reggie in the fourth spot. George told Thurman and Lou, go in the bathroom. I'll handle this. He lets Billy in. Billy immediately knows that there's somebody there. And of course, Thurman and Lou come out of <laughs> George's bathroom. I was a little scared when <laughs> when Billy came in and, and said, what the hell are you two guys doing in there? And then he saw those lineups up there, and he wasn't very happy at all. He really wasn't. George is trying to explain to Billy, look, nobody's trying to undermine you here, but we really need you to think about this. Just think about this, Billy. I wound up hitting in the fourth slot, and that seemed to benefit me quite a bit. There it is, an upper deck plant. Reggie's getting into one of those grooves. From that point on, with Reggie in the cleanup spot, happy, content, and just focused on doing his thing, the team took off and the whole season turned around. Batting cleanup might seem like a small thing, but to a proud man like Reggie, it wasn't. He drove in more runs than anyone else in the American League the rest of the season to finish up with 32 homers and 110 RBIs overall. And the Yankees, they caught fire with him. It made a big difference in the way Reggie performed and the way the team played. We really caught fire and vaulted in the first place and stayed there the rest of the year. But when the playoffs started, Reggie got off to a rough start, one for 14. And that gave Billy Martin a chance to stick it to him one more time in the fifth and final game against the Royals. I remember Fran Healy being in my ear, Reggie. You're not going to play today. And I kind of looked at him like he was crazy. And he said, whatever you do, the media is going to be all over you. Just make sure you're watching the game. Don't snarl, don't smirk. Be careful of what your actions are. So I sat on the end of the bench with a bat. So Reggie Jackson not playing today, but he is available to pitch yet. So Reggie waited and waited until opportunity knocked in the eighth inning. It's first to third, one out, and Reggie Jackson is the pinch hitter. And I walked out of the end of the dugout, just right to home plate. I don't think I took a warm-up swing or anything. I just stood at home plate. I was so bothered. Reggie Jackson is 25th championship series game, which is a record. He's never missed a big game, but he came close to missing this one, but he's in there now. Three to one, Kansas City leading top of the eighth, one out. Deep to center field, Otis comes in, it drops in front of him. Everybody is safe at midfield, three to two ball game. The hit was the big part of the comeback that won the game and sent the Yankees to the World Series against the Dodgers. And in the series, suddenly Reggie was hot again, hitting homers in game four and five. How do you like the way Reggie Jackson has come back? I'll prove myself where it counts, he says, in the batter's box. 
Yankee Stadium in the Bronx, New York City, the site for game number six of the 1977 World Series. The Yankees were up 3-2, one win away from their first title in 15 years. It was the biggest game of the season with the whole world watching. It was the perfect time for Reggie Jackson to be everything he said he was. You're talking about New York City. You're talking about Yankee Stadium. That's where the word superstar was invented. I mean, how can you get a bigger stage to dance on? Today, we're talking about automotive awards. Which one of these awards appeals most to you? Uh, top safety pick, mid-size car and SUV. Most dependable means a lot to me. The green car, because I like fuel efficiency. What if there was a car company that received all of these awards? One company, one award in all these? Chevy. Ah, uh, uh, Chevy. Uh, Chevrolet is the most awarded car company of the last two years. I love it. It's fierce. How would you sum this car up in one word? Incredible, amazing, I can't use one word. <laughs> It's time for the Can-Am Yellow Tag Sales Event. Get a cash rebate of up to $3,000 on selected models or get the Outlander L starting at $55.99. Don't miss out. Visit your local dealer before October 31st. Can-Am, the ride says it all. I'm here in Bristol, Virginia, and now I'm in Bristol, Tennessee. On this side of the road is Virginia. And on this side, it's Tennessee. No matter which state in the country you live in, you could save hundreds on car insurance by switching to GEICO. Look, I'm in Virginia. I'm in Tennessee. Virginia, Tennessee. And now I'm in, uh, Virginia Sea. See how much you could save on car insurance. Or am I in Tennessee? Hmm. Only got one life. There are some voices that can't be ignored. You come at the king, you best not miss. It's time to grow up. Culture of winning matters. We're watching a revolution. Speak for yourself. Weekdays at 5 Eastern on FS1. No mercy. You sound like a man who is afraid that I am dead right. You talk about the Cowboys and the Patriots like they're like your kids. <laughs> oh. I'm missing. This is the place to be. But you won't listen. I do not hate LeBron James. In fact, I like him. I don't like it. I love it. That's the hottest seat in sports media. No mercy, no mercy. This is undisputed. You don't just ask for what you want, you demand it. With all the butts I put in the seats, I'm never gonna have more leverage than I do right now. I can't say that we wouldn't trade you. There is no limit to what you can do. Is there? All new pitch returns this Thursday on Fox. Yankee Stadium and the side for game number six of the 1977 World Series. We're glad we're here. We're happy to be here. We know that the fans want to win in New York. We know the organization wants to win. Doesn't even need to be a said how much we want to win. New York was ready for this. The Bronx was ready for this. And Reggie was ready to deliver for them. I had an incredible batting practice. The stadium was full. The media was jammed four or five deep around the batting cage. I probably had 50 swings, and I probably hit 35 balls in a 50-foot radius in right center. And when I got done batting practice, I got a standing ovation. It was absolutely electric. And I remember Dick Young, the Daily News, went up to him right at the batting cage, and he said, boy, you're really on tonight, Reggie. And I remember saying, I sure hope I don't leave it right here. <laughs> After walking his first time up, Reggie Jackson returned to the plate in the fourth, with the Yankees behind three to two. They were one win away from a World Series title with the whole world watching. Just the situation that Reggie had come to New York for. 
next three pitches he'd see would define his legend forever. Before the game, I had checked with the leader of our scouting staff, Gene Michael. I called up to the booth and I said, hey, Stick, what do you got? And they said, they're going to pitch you in. They think they can get you out in. I liked the ball away. I made the Hall of Fame and could not hit the ball in. And so I got off home plate about four inches and looked for the ball in. Next time up, they brought in Sosa from the bullpen. Five to three, New York. Bottom of the fifth inning. First pitch he threw was a fastball in. He didn't get it in far enough. It got out before I got out of batter's box. Yankees go ahead 7-3. to three. This guy who has been telling pretty steadfastly every day that he took a breath how important and how good and how talented he was. A few moments ago, as Reggie Jackson went to his defensive position in right field, you might call it aggrandizement of an athlete. This guy is doing what he's saying. Now they say the cream comes to the top, and George Steinbrenner paid that man $3 million in this game. It looks like that investment is paying off. Now listen to the ovation for Reggie Jackson as he comes up to the plate. They brought in Charlie Huff, and I'd had probably seven or eight home runs off the knuckleballers, and I went like, man, they're bringing this guy in? No, I'm going to have some good swings. Reggie Jackson has seen two pitches in the strike zone tonight, two, and he's in a both in the seat. First ball he threw was just like strawberry shortcake room service. extraordinary. It is one of the most theatrical things I've ever seen covering sports. Whatever you say about Reggie Jackson, people will always love him or hate him, but the son of a bitch won the game. Forget about who the most valuable player is in the World Series. How this man has responded to pressure. It doesn't get any bigger in our sport than playing in the World Series, and uh, Reggie just took it over. Reggie was the guy George had brought in to do just this. After all the furor, after all the hassling, it came down to this. That was the night Reggie Jackson became Mr. October. He wound up being the guy that, in fact, stirred the drink and led them to a world championship. Is this the best day of your life? <laughs> I had some good ones. This one tastes pretty sweet. Hey, Evan. So, you're stuck at a work thing. With DirecTV and AT&T, you can stream all your favorite shows without using your data. That makes you more powerful than a table for 60. Wednesdays are the new Thursdays. Or the mandatory after party. How early is too early to leave? You're not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. It's your TV. 
Take it with you. Watch all your live channels on your device's data free. Why do we put so much effort into engineering the Can-Am Defender? Because a job worth doing is worth doing right. Can-Am Defender. Tough, capable, clever. Get a three-year BRP limited warranty plus a $1,500 rebate. Your can's thinking playoffs. Your can's thinking division. Nobody catches ball. Your can's thinking Houston. Don't jinx it. Your can is Houston. insurance company wasn't only there when things went wrong because for every tornado there's a twister for every crash an even bigger collision and for every tailspin well tailspins state farm understands that getting the most out of life doesn't just mean being there when things go wrong it's about being here in all of life's moments when things go perfectly right the Rolls-Royce of 77 in the 77 World Series. Great memories. You know, it's a great feeling. I, a lot of people talk about guys like DiMaggio and Mays and, and Aaron and Clemente. And I can now say that I had one day that was like those guys. The night I hit the three homers, I went over to his place the next day. Michael Shudroff, he said, Reggie, what an unbelievable night you had last night. Oh, I got a car in for you. I just got it. They just took it off of the truck. You got to own this thing. It's all for you. I'm not going to sell the car to anybody else. Come on into the showroom here. Yeah. So I go in and I take a look, and it's this silver over blue, Yankee colors, 1977 Cornish convertible, Rolls Royce. <laughs> Forget about it. Get your guy on the phone and get the check in. They wire the money. I drive it home that night. The next morning, I'm going to California. And I drove this car to California in 48 hours, never stopped. I got stopped in Ohio doing about 90. And the police officer said, I heard you were on the highway. I'm not going to give you a ticket. I just want to meet you. And uh, the next time I got stopped was in Missouri. I was doing about 100. Well, Mr. Jackson, where are you going in such a hurry? I said, well, I'm just trying to get home to California. He said, man, you sure did have a nice World Series, and I happen to be a Yankee fan. I'm not going to give you a ticket, but I'd sure like to shake your hand and let you go on your way. Just a happy time. I couldn't wait to get home and share the victory with my friends. The next season, Reggie Jackson returned to New York to try to do it all over again. And in October 1978, sure enough, he led the Yankees to a second straight World Series title over the Dodgers. Reggie, this is what, five World Championships for you now? Yes, Tony, this is the fifth one. All right, do you enjoy this one or savor it more than the others? Yes, I do. Every time you win a World Series, it's one of the greatest things in the world. Still. After those two titles, the Yanks didn't make the series the next two years. And as 1981, the last year of Reggie's contract approached, George Steinbrenner decided he needed to bring in a new star alongside him, making a clear statement about the club's future. In 1981, when George signed Winfield, he made no bones about the fact that he viewed Winfield as his successor to Reggie. The Winfield thing was, you know, it was like, it was like Steinbrenner ditched him for a trophy wife. I mean, that's that's really what had happened there. I heard you. Have a 
here. <laughs> <laughs> All the good things that Reggie had done here, and he wasn't appreciated. He had felt jilted by George, and uh, he, it bothered him mentally all year. Through the controversy, Jackson and Winfield teamed up to lead the Yanks to the World Series. Reggie went deep in game four, his 10th and final homer all time in the series. But New York lost in six games. Reggie was a free agent again, and that ended up being the sad ending to a marriage that had transformed a superstar and a franchise. I don't believe they even had a contract negotiation with him. I think he just let Reggie go. I wish I could have finished my career in New York, but it wasn't meant to be. It wasn't my choice that I left. I went to the Angels and certainly enjoyed myself there. I know I can play. But I tell you what, when I come back, you better look out. He came back as an angel three weeks into the 82 season. It might have been April, not October. But that didn't stop Reggie from getting a little revenge at Yankee Stadium. As long as I had a bat in my hand, I always thought I could get the last say. And Reggie hits one out. First pitch, upper deck, right field. You got me, come on. He comes back and hits a home run. And it, it's, it's ridiculous. You think Yankee fans aren't giving Jackson some kind of love a standing ovation? You think Reggie's still out a Yankee uniform? I do remember the game clearly. There certainly was some redemption in, in hitting that home run that night. Reggie led the league in home runs in 1982. He played five years in all with the Angels and then one more back in Oakland before retiring in 1987. With 563 career home runs, five years later, the Hall of Fame came calling. Being involved in the Hall of Fame with Mantle, Ford, Garrick, DiMaggio, Ruth is good for Reggie Jackson. And so, I'll go in as a Yankee. Reggie's decision says something about how he viewed himself and the legacy of Mr. October. We were thrilled that he decided to go into the Cooperstown as, as a Yankee. Um, big deal because he played a lot of years for, for Finley and the A's, won three world championships with him. But the city was made for him. The stage was made for him. The platform that being a Yankee. He knew what his job was. He was hired to hit home runs and win the World Series. And in that way, it was mission accomplished. Regardless of the fact that he only played five years here, I think most people remember Reggie as being a Yankee, not only just Yankee fans, but baseball fans in general. These days, Reggie's a special advisor to the Yankees. He also runs the Mr. October Foundation, which focuses on educating kids in science, technology, engineering, and math and he collects cars. But this time of year, his time of year, his shadow still towers over everyone because of what he did and how he did it. October is special. When October comes, I feel like good things are gonna happen to me, so I, I get a certain energy, I get a certain excitement. He told me that's still his month. <laughs> that's Mr. October. And always remember Mr. October, the straw that stirred the drink, the man who was in awe of his own magnitude. Wouldn't have had that magnitude if he hadn't come through, and through again, and through again on the biggest night of his baseball life. It's in the books what he did. There's no point for him to prove anymore. He said they'd say this or that about me. He said, but it's in the books. You may love him, you may not, but you can't ignore him. Reggie Jackson has made a tremendous impression on the game of baseball. I wouldn't take anything back. I absolutely was owning who I was. 
you asked me a question and I did my best to give you a good, honest answer. And if it wasn't what you wanted to hear, I'm not sorry. I came to win and I came to hit home runs and to drive in runs and to be the best. I played for the respect of Mays and Mantle, Koufax and Gibson and Frank Robinson and those players that when they looked at you, they'd say, Reggie Jackson, no, he's a pretty good player.